Hi everyone, I'm Matt. This is Matt Talks Photography. Today we're going to take a look at 10 photos from Dorothea Lang. Dorothea was a Depression era documentary photographer who did some amazing work documenting the effects of the Great Depression, but also created some important work during World War II. Dorothea's most famous photograph is Migrant Mother, which you may have seen before. It's an absolutely stunning photograph. There's so much communication in the eyes and the face of the migrant mother here. It's an iconic photograph that feels like it's even applicable today. You can see that the migrant mother is surrounded with three children here. I like the fact that you can't see their faces because it really is about her and there is no competition for the amazing expression that's been captured on her face. The children visually are surrounding her and clearly her thoughts are all consuming about being able to support her family and find a better future for them. You can see the tension in her face and the way that she touches her face with her hand that pulls at her skin. In this reproduction of the photograph as well, there's an incredible amount of texture and detail throughout the clothes which help to place this image in a socio-economic kind of situation and that these are people who are struggling to make ends meet. One interesting thing about the photograph, which is not all that consequential, but is an early example of what would now be called Photoshop, but back then was editing in the darkroom. There was a finger in the photograph that was here, and it has been disguised through techniques in the darkroom. This is Drought Refugees, 1935. What I particularly like in this image is the play on scale. So we have this giant gentleman here who's right directly in front of the camera. And then we have almost a very similar pose in the woman that's here in the background, who may be this person's partner. The square crop is also working really well as a composition. It's quite interesting. And you'll notice that the space in front of the man is quite empty. It really gives his hands a lot of separation from the background and allows him to stand out, whereas behind him are all of the ranchackle type tents and also a vehicle. The fact that there isn't much happening in the sky also allows a lot of prominence on the main subject. This is an interesting photograph documenting a country store. I do kind of wonder how posed and set up this photograph is because all of these subjects do seem to be quite willing to be photographed. There is one fellow in the background who seems to be peeking around the side of the pole here and this was one of a number of photographs that she took at this location. You can see the pose of the gentleman in the shop it looks very relaxed. He's gripping the different sides of the door frame and has a bent knee here. Given the racial tensions in America during these times, I wonder if that was a deliberate choice to have these groups mingling and also to show that kind of warmer sense of community through this photograph. Dorothy and Lang had a commission to document relocation centers, and these camps were full of people of Japanese origin that were calling the USA home at the time of the Second World War. There was, of course, a distrust in the community of those that were perceived to be Japanese by American citizens, given that there was the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. Dorothea Lang would humanize these people by bringing us portraits of them from those relocation centers. In this particular instance, Dorothea is shooting upwards at this gentleman. His face has a lot of emotion and almost a tinge of sadness. The child doesn't seem to know completely what's going on, but it's not a happy photograph. It is, however, a very human one. The choice to photograph up against a clear sky really simplifies this image and provides a lot of clarity. This is another image that Dorothea Lang took as part of that project. I believe that these children are probably giving a pledge of allegiance, and that is why the caption is One Nation Indivisible. One thing that this photograph really captures is a sense of innocence. We have this girl on the right who has a lovely smiling expression. We've got the girl in the middle who seems to have a mix of awe and concern. There are a lot of different expressions throughout the image of these children. And then we've also got the adults in the background that provide an additional context as well. If this were a setup photograph and not a documentary photograph, I would probably look to minimize the impact of the white shoes in this bottom right-hand corner. 
perhaps darkening that area down to draw our eyes up towards the faces. In this image, Dorothea has captured the migration of families in this time that would have to travel to find work. It really provides a lot of context compared to how we live today and the different challenges that they were facing during the Great Depression. This photograph depicts six figures, but actually kind of seven figures because you've got this person in the background that's obviously pushing a pram. I like the composition that has these three separate groups of people within the one family. It's got the father and possibly a daughter. We've got the mother and two more children. And then we've got the person behind pushing the pram who might be one of the older children that's taking on a bit more responsibility. Dorothea has also captured a moment here you can see that the child is quite distracted. There's some kind of object that's fallen and hit the road here. It's another image regarding migration. This is quite a different socioeconomic class. We have somebody that is able to afford a vehicle, even if it isn't necessarily in the best of condition. And we have these children looking quite interested in what's going on outside the vehicle. One interesting aspect of this as a portrait is that we have this lion that's going past the vehicle, that's attaching things to it, that runs through the face of the child in the background, and the child in the foreground is looking out from underneath it. The parents or older siblings in the front don't really appear interested in whatever's happening in the photograph at all. This image of an unemployed lumber worker with his wife is quite an unusual composition. Both figures are forced to the edges of the frames here, and the only thing in the center really is this hanging dress. It provides some tension to the photograph, but I can't claim to understand exactly why that composition was chosen. I do like the posing of the lumberjack in the foreground. I don't know if that posing was natural for him or partly guided, but he looks like a pretty proud gentleman. He's obviously kept quite well with his hair. He's got this interesting tattoo on his arm that's being presented towards the camera. We've also got his thumb facing the camera as well. Now, the lady seems to have a look of concern. She's touching her ankle. She's got her face resting, looking towards the photographer. She doesn't look quite certain. Perhaps that's a an expression that's being read into the fact that she's a little bit out of focus in the scene. Whereas the gentleman seems a lot more reassured. If I were looking at what could be improved, this was obviously taken in some very difficult, harsh light under the shadow of whatever this tent is made out of, some kind of canvas perhaps, and that's creating some quite harsh light where the sun is breaching through that material. However, that is rather to be expected. My Gratery Cotton Picker, 1940. The texture in this portrait is just absolutely beautiful. We've got not only the texture in the skin, especially here on the hands, which are the feature of the image, but we also have it in what the gentleman is wearing as well, and his hair. The covering of the face by the hand makes the image a little bit more about the work and about the difficulties that this man is facing and his dedication and persistence than it does about this individual's actual identity. However, we get enough of his eyes, nose, ear, and hair that we can see him as an individual and he would possibly be recognizable. It's a beautifully simple portrait. I included this because I found it quite interesting the different approach that Dorothea took towards photographing her own son, Dan. This was taken in 1930. And while you can see that a lot of her other images are a little bit darker, this one is quite high key, and that is that many of the areas of the image are within the highlights. She has handled those highlights very well, and it's created quite an elegant, simple, sophisticated image. Despite it being her son, I like that there's a sense of anonymity created by having the material draped over the face, which is obviously to shield him from the sun as well. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, that flew by. I hope you've enjoyed the last 10 images. Dorothea Lang donated a lot of her work to the Oakland Museum of California, 
which also has an online repository of her work, which is well worth having a look at. She's a very influential American photographer who created some very important work in terms of documenting that time and history in the USA. There's a lot of her work out there that's quite fascinating. This has been Matt Talks Photography. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.